Right, I'm joined by John, John Hello. Salmon, uh, a contestant in the London Marathon a couple of Sundays ago. So congratulations on that achievement, John. Uh, just talk us through how it went for you in London. Um, so I think probably with London, it kind of met all my expectations. Um, I've not wanted to run this kind of the London Marathon for a number of years, but never thought I'd get around to actually running it. Um, but yeah, it's kind of true what people say about the crowds and, you know, I've seen some reports saying there was between half a million and three quarters of a million people out there. Incredible support, um, incredibly well organised um, before the race, um, everything with, you know, the transport to actually get there, um, then, you know, running the actual marathon itself um, as far as water stops, um, facilities on the route and incredibly well marshalled as well. Absolutely. And just coming on to your running journey, John, how did you get into running? Um, so I guess I'd probably just kind of quite gradually. Um, there was like a few smaller um, kind of 5K runs around um, London. There's one that's for um, kind of a crisis and run to raise money for charity for um, people who are out on the streets. And that's, that was quite a nice step into running which is about five five k run and then over the last few years you know slowly move up to a 10k um get a few of those under your belt and then you know you start to kind of set your ambition to think you know can you do a half marathon you know and then you know i've got to say once i finished did my first half in reading a few years ago i thought that's it there's i haven't got any more in me to do a marathon but yeah r r amazingly um yeah, I was able to get a place through for a char charity ballot for London Marathon and um, yeah, completed that just a, a few weeks ago. Top stuff. So that's a classic example, John, of how you can kind of start off it with a small target and work your way up and gradually mm. sort of get into it more. So over the last couple of years, what at what stage did you think, OK, I'm going to step up from a half marathon to a marathon? Um, probably about... Uh, two two and a half three years ago i tried to get through um on a ballot place um for the london marathon the previous year and i was, wasn't successful on the ballot um and so this the, the, this previous year i thought i'd you know i always also wanted to run with a purpose as well so i, I ran for the the charity mind and to raise awareness for mental health and um the that you know, but even then, even trying to get a charity place, that's not no guaranteed option for getting into the London Marathon. So when I was actually phoned up to say I got a place for the London Marathon, that was that was still quite a surprise. Um, but it was it was probably within the last couple of years that actually thought let's let's try and go for that um, yeah that marathon distance. Definitely. And how has your training been then, John, for for this marathon? Um, so I only, I only actually started training at the beginning of, um, of January for, for the marathon. Um, it was, um, again, trying to juggle a young family and um, trying to find the right amount of training to do. Um, there's lots of Facebook groups and lots of groups that you can kind of get advice from other, other people that run the London Marathon. But it's always quite a personal thing trying to work out how much training you need to do. And like everything, you can compare your... Um, your training to other people and it's um, you know there was a few, a few things that were said to me quite early on that you know that you know 10 to 15 percent of people don't actually make it to the marathon on the on the day due to injury and um, have to defer their place I part of me always thought that that was me being kind of copping out a bit from some of my training but um, I was trying to you know, at least be running to work um, once a week. That was about kind of seven, eight miles. And then I've got some marker key runs in. So Reading Half Marathon, um, the Oakley 20 mile, about three or four weeks before the, the main marathon. And kind of try to fit in, fitting my training around work and family life. But it, it is a real challenge. And especially when you're comparing to other people competing, it's very easy to think you're not doing enough. Um, but I think kind of um, the other thing that was told to me was about you know listen to your body so um, you know quite early on into my training I was getting a few aches and pains and you know I think it's knowing when to actually take a few days off from your training and just let let your body heal and um, 
and then then pick up again with the training so yeah those are kind of my two two tips to kind of you know don't necessarily overtrain and yeah if you're getting any kind of aches pains you know the worst thing there's I was amazed at the London Marathon how many people at the start line were strapped up and lots of different supports and you know try and if you can start running the marathon without injury um, that's at least a, at least a good start for sure and just intrigued there John about um, you saying you've got a, a young family and, and you have to fit in you had to fit in the training around your busy life and obviously you've got work as well so what were your main kind of strategies for for managing your time on that level um, so yeah kind of it's also the challenge with the London Marathon the time that it falls for training it's quite dark a lot of the time um, so for me kind of running early mornings suited me better um, and um, as I say trying to fit in um, some key marker runs um, Sunday morning as well was kind of time that I, I would normally have to myself um, the usual time you want to sit back with a cup of coffee and read the paper but um, <laughs> Sunday morning um, it, it was, I was always out every Sunday trying to get, to get my distance um, and I think also um, I found it really helpful with training to almost run with a purpose so rather than just go out for a run it's like let's run to the Olympic Park or let's run you know to X train station and then just get the train back you know I think um, you don't always have to run in a loop um, and so there was times when I would kind of get the map out and say right I need to run 10 miles um, today where will that take me and um, yeah I didn't feel you know and then could sit back on the train and uh, drink a bottle of water on the way back so yeah I think kind of within your training try and you know run to interesting places if you if you if you can absolutely and just moving forward John uh, what are the biggest lessons that you're going to take with you um, to continue your running career having done London I don't know about running career um, <laughs> <laughs> I went for my first run after the marathon today um, and yeah you can see why people get bitten by the, the marathon bug um, I would love to do an, um, another marathon while while running the marathon it was London marathon it was quite warm um, and the the wall that a lot of people talk about and also have had that problem with there was that nervousness um, coming into the second half of the London marathon that I was going to have you know have some problems and luckily I, I didn't and there's part of me now that says if I was to do another marathon that I could maybe push that a little bit harder Definitely, and I was intrigued to hear there, John, you say about your charity you were running for, Mind for Mental Health. Just yeah. tell us a little bit more about that and also how much of an extra motivation it gave you running for that cause. So there's so many. Um, it's quite moving, really, when, when you're you know, just about to start running in London Marathon. You realise there's a lot of people there that are running, even if they haven't got a charity place, um, are running for a, a, a particular cause or a particular person, maybe. And the the charity angle for me, there's there's anybody who gets a ballot place for who will have to for sorry a charity place will have to raise between you know sixteen hundred and two thousand um, pounds. Some of the even more popular charities it could be slightly higher. Um, it, it is a pressure. It's an added pressure to to not just your training, but then to also think how on earth am I going to raise um, such a large amount of money. Um, but what comes with it is um, now with it's so easy for people to donate, um, and so I was very lucky to for people to donate to my online charity um, Virgin Money Giving page, um, and then the, the support the charity actually gave was incredible. So they set up events for us all to meet up. So we did a training session in Hyde Park. Um, lots of tips and um, Facebook group that has been incredibly important. Um, again, some some very good runners in that group. So there's always, um, you know, you kind of have to be aware when you're any any kind of forum or, you know, trying to find the right um, advice. But yeah, running on the day for a, for a for a charity like mine was was incredible, um, and um, 
yeah, so you've kind of got this, you, the support of all the runners and they had a number of different cheering points along the route so that had cheerleaders and it g gives you a massive boost and um, and also after the event I was obviously quite tired but there was a reception and they were um, as well as kind of um, tea and coffee and some food that was laid on there was also kind of um, people giving massages as well so again um, yeah it was a, incredibly you know amazed by how generous people were at giving money um, for mind um, and um, yeah no just an incredible experience sounds absolutely inspirational there John very uplifting cause that you're working towards there good on you for that um, so John just finally um, in terms of the next couple of weeks couple of months even mm. what are your, your short-term to medium-term aims in running so I think just trying that, that Sunday morning run, if I can keep that Sunday run um, where I can go and run to interesting places, um, then, you know, you know, probably not running to work every week, um, but trying to, you know, keep that level of fitness up. I've started to just like have a little peek at other marathons that may be happening around. <laughs> um, so I, people say the Amsterdam marathons, uh, you know, quite, quite flat and yeah. uh, it's quite good fun um, that's in October but um, I don't know we'll, we'll wait and see I'm, I'm still in, kind of got the glow of um, winning of not winning of running the uh, the London Marathon winning so probably a few years away absolutely but you know it's, it's on the way John but thanks very much for giving that interview John okay. really uh, appreciate your time and some very uh, interesting things that you've come out with there thank you okay thanks Frankie